Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be integrating the square root of tangent x dx. Now you've probably seen this problem before because a lot of YouTubers use a clever trick to solve this problem, but I'll do something else. So let's get started. First of all, I'm going to use substitution. So let's go ahead and set this square root of tangent x equal to something like u. So u is equal to square root of tangent x. And then from here, I'm going to square both sides and get u squared equals tangent x. Now, obviously, when I use the method of substitution with integrals, I want to get dx as well, right? du and dx, how are they related? So let's go ahead and differentiate both sides and multiply by the differentials so we can get the d's. So the left-hand side is going to be 2u. So to get the way to get the du and dx is basically you differentiate u squared with respect to u and then just multiply by du, okay? So the derivative of u squared is 2u and you multiply, happy birthday, 2u if it's your birthday. Anyways, 2u du. And on the right-hand side, the derivative of tangent x is just secant squared x. And then we're going to multiply it by dx. Okay? Great. Now let's go ahead and see what we can do from here. Since our expression or our integral contains d of x, or what are you talking about? dx. So I would like to solve for dx here. So this is our equation. Let's go ahead and isolate dx. dx can be written as 2u du divided by secant squared x. Now, obviously, when I write dx in terms of u, I don't want anything that contains x. So I need to be able to convert secant squared x into something in terms of u. And that can be done easily by considering the original substitution. So we said that u squared is tangent x. We, if you square both sides, we get u to the fourth power is tangent squared. And as you hopefully know, tangent squared can be written as secant squared x minus 1. Because secant squared is 1 plus tangent squared. And if you think about it, 1 plus tangent squared minus 1 is the same thing as tangent squared. So this means secant squared can be replaced with u to the fourth plus 1. Again, u to the fourth plus 1 minus 1 equals u to the fourth. Make sense? So now we're going to go ahead and replace secant squared with u to the fourth plus 1. And that'll do the trick. But before we get into the mechanics of this, let's go ahead and take a look at the result from Wolfram Alpha, which doesn't look very pleasant, right? But anyways, that's what I got uh, from Wolfram Alpha, some tangent hyperbolic inverses and so on and so forth. Anyways, our expression is not going to be that simple either, but it's not going to be the same as this one, at least <laughs> by the looks. So this is what I got for dx. You got to remember, we have the square root of tangent x multiplied by dx. And the square root of x is, I mean, square root of tangent x is u. And dx is 2u du divided by u to the fourth plus 1. So we're supposed to multiply those two expressions. And that's actually going to give us 2u squared du divided by u to the fourth plus 1. So here's the critical part. I think so far, pretty much, we all got the same answer. And here, we're going to differ a little bit. Well, a great deal, actually. So I'll be focusing on integrating this expression right here, okay? u squared divided by u to the fourth plus 1. So we're going to do a lot of algebraic manipulations, but we're not going to use the integral symbol for a while until we get something concrete, and then we'll just start integrating, okay? Now, I'd like to use something that is actually very helpful with rational expressions. And that is called partial fractions. I hope you know how to do that, but I'll talk about it anyways. So I'm going to go ahead and isolate this term here. Forget about the du and the 2 because 2 can always be added to the expression. Now let's go ahead and see how we can split it up. By split up, I mean... We're going to first factor u to the fourth plus one, obviously. How do you factor u to the fourth plus one? That's going to be the main part of this expression because if you don't know how to factor it, then you're not going to be able to use this method. It's a little complicated, so I'm going to have to skip some steps, but here's what we can do. 
We can basically write this as u to the fourth plus one plus two u squared minus two u squared. Now you might be wondering why I added two u squared and subtracted it. And the reason is to get a perfect square. This is u squared squared, and this is one squared. So I added the two ab, remember a squared plus b squared plus two ab, and two ab in this case is gonna be two u squared. Okay, so now our expression can be written as follows. u squared, obviously going to be the numerator. The denominator can be written as u squared plus 1 quantity squared minus 2u squared. But wait a minute, isn't this difference of two squares? Almost. You just need to play with 2u squared and kind of write it as square root of 2u squared. Make sense? Because when you square the root 2, you're going to get 2 from there. So it's kind of like a little bit uh, forced. We had to push it to irrationals, but that's basically the only way to factor it. And some of fourth powers, there is a formula called Sophie Germain, which I made a video about a long time ago. But anyways, that's an important formula. So now we're going to factor this by using difference of two squares. And that's going to be like this, u squared plus root 2u plus 1. By the way, I just uh, switched the terms around after taking care of the quadratic, and this is what it's going to look like. Okay? So now, here's the critical part. How do you split this up into two fractions? You've got to consider two fractions with this denominator and this denominator. So since we have a quadratic and it's not factorable, as we know, we're going to have to make a difference of um, 1 in powers. So the numerator is supposed to be, since this is quadratic, when we split it up, the numerator is supposed to be linear. So I'm going to write it as a u plus b, a and b are constants, and then c u plus d, all right, for the second one. Now from here, I'm going to spare you the trouble because this is going to take a long time to do. Well, not too long, but a is going to be negative 1 over 2 root 2 from here. B is going to be 0. C is going to be positive 1 over 2 root 2. And D is also going to be 0. Therefore, our expression can be factored as follows or split up as follows. We're going to get 1 over 2 root 2 times the quantity u over u squared minus root 2u plus 1 minus u over u squared plus root 2u plus 1. So those expressions are very similar. We're going to take advantage of that. But let's go ahead and talk about one of the integrals. And I'm going to pick this one because this has a positive. And then I'm going to show you how you can apply it to the other one because the methods are very similar. So now let's go ahead and try to integrate this one. u over u squared plus root 2u plus 1. Of course, there's a du when you integrate it. How do you integrate something like this, right? So here's the thing. We're going to go ahead and do a little bit of manipulation here. So here's how it goes. I'd like to start with this one first. u over u squared plus root 2u plus 1. So here's what I'd like to do. I want to insert a 2 here. You'll see in a little bit why. And multiply by 1 half. Obviously, 1 half times 2 is 1, so we're good. Now, why did I do that, though, right? Because I'm going to be adding a root 2 and subtract a root 2. And the reason behind that is fairly simple, well, sort of, if you've done this before. If you take a look at this expression, that's quadratic. And if you differentiate it, the derivative of this expression is going to be 2u plus root 2, which is part of the expression that I have in the numerator. Does that make sense? So now I'm going to go ahead and split it up into two pieces like this. 2u plus root 2 divided by the quadratic. And then minus a constant root 2 divided by the same quadratic. So we kind of split it up into two fractions with the same denominator, and we're going to integrate these separately. But guess what? This one is fairly simple, because if you call this t, this is going to be t prime. In other words, the integral of that is just going to be ln of the denominator. Fairly simple. But don't forget the 1 half. There's a 1 half on the outside. Make sense? Great. Now, how do you do the second piece, right? Well, the second piece is going to be as follows. I want to distribute the 1 half, by the way. So this is going to give me root 2 over 
two times this expression. All right? You'll see in a little bit why I'm distributing it because that's going to help you uh, simplify this expression. Okay? So let's go ahead and distribute this whole thing and we get the following. Now, here's what I want to do in the denominator. Obviously, numerator is a constant, so don't worry about it. I'm going to write the denominator as a perfect square plus or minus some constant. Make sense? So how do you do at a perfect square? Since I'm not allowed to split up a u squared, I can only split up a constant. So I have to use these two terms to make it a perfect square. And the perfect way to do it is as follows. You can write this as square root of 2u plus 1 squared. Guess what? This gives you 2u squared from a squared plus 2ab is going to give you 2 root 2u, which is the next term right here. And then, of course, plus 1, but I do have a plus 2, so I'm going to have to add another 1 here. Make sense? 1 plus 1 equals 2, which gives me this number right here. I hope that makes sense. Now, how do you integrate this? Easy. It's arctangent or tangent inverse. If you call this t, then you're going to get t equals square root of 2u plus 1. dt is going to be root 2 du. And that's exactly what we have here. Root 2 and, of course, du is going to come in with the integral. So here's what we get from here. The integral of root 2 over 2u squared plus 2 root 2u plus 2 du is actually equal to 10 inverse of t, which is 10 inverse of root 2u plus 1. That's our second piece. So here's what we got from here. Let me summarize the results. I know this is going to be a long video. I hope you bear with me on that because on the at the end, we can kind of put it all together. Now, here's what we got from integrating this piece. This minus the 10 inverse stuff, okay? Because why minus? Because there was a minus sign. Great. I'm not putting the C yet because we'll put that at the end. But guess what? This piece and the other piece are very similar. So think about the other piece. The other piece is basically u du, but instead of a plus sign, you have a minus sign. So here's a clever trick that we can use. Go ahead and set u equal to negative v. And from here, du is going to be negative dv. So let's go and replace u with negative v and du with negative dv. So the numerator is just going to be v dv. And let me erase these because they look confusing. And then at the bottom, the only thing that's going to change is here is because u squared is the same as v squared. So it's going to be v squared plus root 2 v plus 1. And guess what? This is the same as this integral. Therefore, the result is going to be the same. So it's going to be 1 half ln v squared plus root 2 v plus 1 minus 10 inverse root 2 v plus 1. The only difference is the variable, but v is negative u because u is negative v. I hope that makes sense. They're opposites. So now we can basically set this integral, which is u du over u squared minus root 2u plus 1 equal to 1 half of ln. Now, v squared is basically going to be replaced with u squared with the negative. So it's going to be u squared minus root 2u plus 1 minus 10 inverse. Here, I'm getting a negative root 2v, but I'm going to write it as 1 minus root 2 u. Make sense? Doesn't matter, but I just like to write it as a difference. Not, I don't want to start with a negative term. So we can put it all together. And remember, we have a 1 over root 2 all the way on the outside because we only integrate the inside. So I have to kind of make sure that I multiply everything by that. Hopefully, I didn't make any mistakes here with the constants. So I'll have a 1 over root 2. And this is going to be, ta-da! the integral of the square root of tangent x, not tangent x, of course, that's easy. And now inside, we're going to have something like this. And I could probably just distribute and give you the result because I already did that work for you. So this is going to be equal to, let's go ahead and write the whole thing, 1 over 4 root 2 ln. Now, remember, we have uh, u squared. Square root of uh, tangent x is u, so when you square it, it's going to be tangent x. So it's going to be ln tangent x. And then minus root 2 times root tangent x is actually 
the square root of 2 tangent x, so I can kind of write it like that, which is a nice shortcut, right? And then plus 1. And of course, we'll continue with the similar pattern. Then we're going to have 1 over 2 root 2 times 10 inverse 1 minus the square root of 2 tangent x. By the way, it's not going to fit here, so I'm going to have to use two lines here. Minus 1 over 4 root 2 ln tangent x plus the square root of 2 tangent x plus 1 plus because we're subtracting a difference so that's going to become a negative I mean a positive after negation 1 half 10 inverse and if you remember this was 1 plus the square root of 2 tangent x plus a constant c at the end don't forget the c and this brings us to the end of this video well thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe I'll see you next time with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye